I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Some like it hot, but your reef isn't one of them. During the summer months, it's important to keep your reef cool as my upper limit for reef tanks is 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, tank automation goes hand in hand with cooling your reef, so here's two ways to keep your reef cool. The most effective way to cool your reef is with a chiller. Now, a chiller is essentially an air conditioner for your tank. Inside the chiller, there's a coil, which is usually made of titanium, over which water from your tank flows. There's also a compressor in here in Freon, which provides that cooling capacity. Most chillers have a built-in thermostat, and I still recommend you add in a layer of redundancy and put the chiller on a temperature controller. Chillers can overcool your tank, which can kill what's inside. The Renko temperature controller is my choice for redundancy of chillers, as it can handle the higher electricity needs of a chiller, and it's known to be reliable. The Auto Aqua Smart Temperature Controller also works, just keep in mind it can only handle 10 amps of power. Note that if you use a tank controller, make sure the electrical draw of the chiller isn't more than the controller is rated for. Check with the controller's manufacturer for their recommended limits. How much a chiller can cool your tank depends on the size of the tank and the size of the chiller. And it's not uncommon for chillers to provide a five degree or more temperature reduction. Now that kind of temperature reduction sounds great, and before you go grab yourself a chiller, keep these things in mind. First, the proper way to install a chiller is to place it outside the room and ideally outside the structure that houses your tank. If you install your chiller next to your tank or worse, inside your tank stand, the heat removed by the chiller will heat up the tank, which will make your chiller turn on, which will heat up the tank, which will make your chiller turn on, which will heat up the tank. You get the idea. While there are drop-in chillers where all you need to do is place a cooling coil in your sump, most chillers need to be plumbed into your tank. That means a pump and plumbing, which can get complicated depending on your setup. If you fear plumbing and you need to cool your tank, go for a drop-in chiller or the second way to cool your tank, cooling fans. Cooling fans work through the physics of evaporative cooling. As water evaporates, it takes heat with it. So to encourage more water to evaporate and therefore take more heat with it, you blow air over the surface of your tank or your sump with a fan, hence the name cooling fan. Now, cooling fans require no plumbing, a smaller footprint, and much less electricity than a chiller. So while cooling fans sound like a slam dunk, keep these things in mind. With cooling fans, you're not going to get large reductions in temperatures, especially on a larger system. That's not the end of the world, though, as if you can simply maintain your tank's temperature, that's okay. And since cooling fans aren't going to give you that big temperature drop, it's very unlikely that they're going to overcool your tank. Here's what you need for an effective cooling fan setup. A cooling fan. For smaller systems, clip-on fans can work great. Tunze makes a nice cooling fan system that mounts to the side of your tank and has the fans turned sideways to blow air over the surface of the water. If you need a lot of cooling power, you need to move more air, so you're going to need a larger fan like a box fan. On-off switch based on temperature. Keep in mind, heater controllers won't work as they turn on when the temperature is below the low set point and turn off when the temperature is above the high set point. You need the logic to work the other way around. Plugging the fan into your tank controller is an easy way to turn them on and off based on temperature. For the Neptune Systems Apex, just select the outlet type as chiller and then set your on and off temperatures. No controller? Not a problem! Since it's very, very unlikely that cooling fans are going to overcool your tank, you can put them on a simple light timer. Turn the cooling fans on when your lights turn on and then turn them off an hour after your lights go off. Of course, monitor your tank's temperature just to make sure that those cooling fans aren't overcooling your tank and to make sure they're working properly. Also keep in mind, you may need to have those cooling fans turn off later than when your lights go off to add extra cooling capacity. The lights are likely the biggest heat source for your tank, so once the lights go off, there's not as much heat going into your tank and then the cooling fans can be more effective. There are pre-made cooling fan setups that operate based on your tank's temperature. Reef Octopus makes a couple of options that ramp up or down based on tank's temperature. Note that these aren't meant for continuous use, so if you find these fans are on all the time, they may not last through multiple cooling seasons. The last two pieces of cooling fan setups are the ones that are most often overlooked. Air temperature and humidity. Evaporative cooling requires you to remove that hot moist air from the thing that you're cooling. If that hot moist air hangs around your tank, then evaporative cooling is going to slow down and it's not going to be effective. Therefore, you may need to open your canopy doors or your stand doors to remove that hot air. Of course, make sure the AC in your house or your fish room is working, as that will help make sure that your cooling fans are most effective. Bonus if you have a return air vent located near your tank. 
A return air vent means that more air is flowing to that area. On my old 90 gallon tank, the return air for the house was located in the room with the tank, and you could sit near the tank and feel the air moving through the room. That meant my cooling fans were very effective. When it's time to cool your reef, a properly deployed chiller will get the job done. And if you have enough airflow around your tank and you don't need large reductions in temperatures, cooling fans can get the job done too. Now if you go the chiller out, make sure you put an external temperature controller behind the chiller to give you that added layer of redundancy. And if you go the cooling fan route, make sure you turn them on and off based on temperature and at the bare minimum, use a light timer. Automating these pieces of equipment to cool your tank will make them safer and more effective too. I'm Mark Callan, and Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. I'll catch you in the next episode.